the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Are you sure? The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Amen. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through it. A man there was named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was short in state stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it begun to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. Because he too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. I don't know about you, but I can't help but think of the Zacchaeus story, and the first thing that comes to my mind is Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He climbed in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. One more time. <laughs> Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Savior passed that way, he looked up in the tree and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. For I'm going to your house today. Yeah, get that out of your head today. <laughs> immediately think of that story and because of that probably it's a story that I always loved as a youth and because it's such a popular story I think so often we miss a lot of what's being said in the story so let's walk through that story line by line and imagine the spatial thing that are taking place in here. How space is used in the Gospel of Luke to tell this story, but then also God's design to be in relationship with Zacchaeus. So how God addresses this story in terms of relationship. So space and relationship. The first thing the story tells us is that Jesus is passing through Jericho. He's passing through does not intend to stop. He's on the turnpike, he's got somewhere to go, and he's not stopping until he gets to the exit or runs out of gas. He's headed somewhere and intends to get there. Or the thing I think of very often for myself, headed to Beaver, and I gotta get through Rochester to get there, and any light that stops me in Rochester is in my way. Right? I, I got a place to go. I'm moving through. The text says Jesus is passing through Jericho. And we know where he's headed. He's headed to Jerusalem. He's passing through. He has a destination, a place to get to. Somehow, his reputation has preceded him, and the town knows he's coming. And the people have come out to see him move through. It's like a president's motorcade moving through town. They want to see, get a glimpse, maybe, lucky, they'll get to see the man as he moves through town. And in the crowd is one named 
Zacchaeus, a tax collector. And immediately the response is, ooh, bad. Tax collectors would have been considered traitors among their people. They're occupied by Rome. Rome stays funded by taking taxes from the people they occupy. The tax collector's job is to collect those taxes. The tax collector has no other job. So the tax collector not only collects the taxes owed to Rome, but he raises the price and skims what doesn't go to Rome for himself. Right? So his money is based on what he tells the people they are owed in taxes. So if the people owe 10% of their income, he might tell them Rome wants 15%. And then he keeps the extra five. You catch the gist here? So he makes a living by taking from his neighbors. He makes a living by taking from his neighbors. That's what a tax collector does. And the story tells us he's rich. He's rich. So he steals a lot. He takes a lot from his neighbors. And they can't do anything about it. Because if you mess with the tax collectors, the Roman soldiers show up and they break your legs or hang you on a cross. Straight up mafia stuff. To a certain extent, he has the full uh, weight of Rome behind him. So what he says you pay, you pay. And this is a man you grew up with. He lived in your town. He went to your schools. His family is part of the community, and he is stealing from you, and you have no idea. He comes back every year, and the price is a little more and a little more, and you see him build his big house. And you go, what is he doing? That's Zacchaeus. And apparently, he's short of stature. But he's made a livelihood by raising himself above those around him. And the story tells us so that he could see Jesus above all the rest, he climbs a tree. He's made, a, a, again, spatially here. You see the story shifts so that he's a head taller than everyone else. A man that is shorter than everyone else is now a head taller. And he's made a livelihood doing just that by using power and opportunity to take. <coughs> I listened to a song not long ago uh, by Slugs and Bugs, which uh, my kids fall asleep to every night. I see Zachary's grinning, in fact. Fall asleep to every night, and we listen to it on the radio or on the car ride. I look into it. It's for kids. Uh, but one of the songs I heard here just the other day, um, the chorus goes something like, some people lie, cheat, and steal. Right? Um, they seek to gain wealth for themselves, but do they not know that on judgment day, all the gold and silver will melt away? Right? Just a reminder, of course, that what we acquire and gain in life, we take nothing with us in death. Nothing. Now this, even, this song goes even further to remind us that on Judgment Day, all of the power, all the prestige, the positions you work to gain in life, all of the wealth you acquired, it's gone. It's meaningless. It's worthless. So why? Why? In Lamentations, the author tells us, why strive? Why work at all? <laughs> why do any of this? It's all smoke in the wind. It's all far before the sunrise. All of this stuff that we work for in life has to have a purpose beyond us or it's meaningless. Zacchaeus has been at work for himself and he's gotten rich by lying, cheating, and stealing from others to get to this place. And it all means nothing. Nothing. And Jesus, on his way through town, sees him. Sees him. And so often, that is such a powerful part in the Gospel of Luke. 
who Jesus sees, their lives are changed. Jesus sees him. Pastor Brandon John serves at uh, St. Peter's in, in Evans City, and I've had the opportunity to get to know him well the, the last few years. Uh, he, myself, and Pastor Angela Smith do a podcast. Uh, look it up. Let me know. I can send you the link. And a couple weeks back, we did one, and Pastor John's talked about being seen. And he talked about doing a trip um, where they went to Madagascar. And one of the things they were told is, don't look at the people while we're driving through. Don't look at them. Because if you lock eyes with them, they're going to expect something from you. And any amount you give them is way more than what they're going to get that day. I mean, any amount you give them. And you just don't, we don't have enough resources to help everybody. So understand that it's better that you just keep your eyes down as we move through town. And he said it was unlike anything he'd ever experienced as they went through town. He had a woman come up to him holding a, a, a young, young baby and went right up to the glass and put her hands on the glass and looked at her. And he goes, I made a mistake. I looked at her. I looked her in the eye and then we drove on by. Right? And he goes, holy cow, holy cow, I saw her, I saw her, the power of being seen. And so often in our lives, what it would have meant to us if in that moment someone had just seen us, had just seen us, what it may have meant in our lives, or the lives of loved ones that have gone before us, to have been seen. Uh, some of you I know will be down in Pittsburgh for a Steelers game coming up. And you're going to pass people. And you're going to know, don't look them in the eye. Because if I see them, it's going to hurt right here. And what do I do about that? How do I respond? How do I engage? It's a thing we wrestle with every day. What does it mean to see and be seen? And Jesus sees the man who's risen above the rest of his people by climbing on their backs and taking what was theirs. Zacchaeus, a traitor and a thief, to his own people. Jesus sees him and says, you come down, for I'm going to your house today. And the whole town goes, oh, no, 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 not his house. I mean, I can imagine that somebody actually leaned over, maybe the, the you know, I'm, I'm making this up, but I can imagine the mayor's been walking in pace with Jesus as he goes through town. And when he sees Jesus stop at Zacchaeus, he, he expects, okay, good, yeah, berate that guy. And then he goes, no, I'm going to your house. And the mayor goes, mm, mm, nope, not that house. Wrong, wrong one, Jesus. Go to, go to Zacchaeus' house. He's a, he's a good guy. That, that one, wrong house. And the whole town starts murmuring about it. Whoa, wasn't he moving through? Why is he stopping at the gangster's house? Why is he stopping at Zacchaeus' house? Zacchaeus' house. Why engage the traitor? <laughs> and Jesus does. You know what's interesting then in the story is that Jesus doesn't tell Zacchaeus to repent. He doesn't ask anything of Zacchaeus. He doesn't call him out on his sin. He doesn't say that Zacchaeus has done anything wrong. By simply seeing Zacchaeus and engaging Zacchaeus at his level, he does something remarkable in Zacchaeus' heart. And it's not just because it's Jesus. It's because he was seen. Now he says, come down, right? Jesus doesn't go up to him because Zacchaeus has had a head above the crowd the whole time. He invites Zacchaeus into relationship, into community again, by coming down to earth. Come down to earth with the rest of us, Zacchaeus. Come on down. 
and engage again at a human level. Experience what it means to be in community again, Zacchaeus. And Jesus brings Zacchaeus out from his high place down to earth where he's got to look up to the rest of the crowd, where he's got to look them in the eye, where Zacchaeus has to see the crowd, his neighbors around him, where Zacchaeus' eyes might be open. And then Jesus engages in relationship. And you know what? A relationship with Jesus changes hearts. Jesus says nothing but in the engagement, Zacchaeus says everything. And it's fascinating when you think about what he actually says. He says, I will give half of what I have to the poor. Half of what I have to the poor. Half? Well, okay. A hundred percent you took from people. So maybe half is the least you could do. Give half back to the poor. Zacchaeus says, I'll give half. But then he goes on to say, and anyone I've cheated, I will give back four times what I've taken. Zacchaeus, that means you'll have nothing. Nothing. You will have nothing if you do that. The experience with Jesus has so transformed Zacchaeus' heart that he realizes the barrier he has built between him and God and him and others was all money related. The barrier he has built between relationship between him and God and relationship between him and others has been about wealth. And Zacchaeus is now willing to give up all of it all of it, to be in better relationship with God and others. And Jesus says, salvation has come to this house today. Not because of what Zacchaeus did. Who is the salvation that came to the house that day? Jesus came. Jesus showed up. Of Jesus' own free will, Jesus engaged Zacchaeus at a human level, and it changed Zacchaeus, an encounter with Jesus should change us too. And having experienced Jesus in our lives, what are we willing to break down, give away, sacrifice, so that we can be in good relationship with others? Now, sometimes that's mine, right? But so often it's other things. Pride, arrogance, anger, hate, fear, all manner of borders, boundaries, things that we put between us and others so that we don't see them for who they are. All sorts of things, all sorts of screens that we place between us and others so that we don't see them for who they are anymore. We see them as something else or we don't see them at all. But when you've experienced salvation by the grace of God, you can't help but look. You can't help but see. And you can't help but respond. The Gospel of Luke over and over again says, an encounter with Jesus changes us because of what Jesus first did for us. Having experienced full hope, meaning, purpose, in a way that is eternal, then we can part with the things that are of this life, that are of this earth, and we can set those things aside and be in relationship with others to make amends, to be at peace with our neighbors, with our families, with ourselves. That's how the faithful saints respond.